Welcome to the final installment in this video tutorial series. We will be importing the final parts into our assembly. So far, we have only used the inbuilt catalog tool in Katia to import additional parts into our assembly. However, it is important to note that there are websites available online that provide 3D models for use within Katia. Many manufacturers will have a 3D catalog of their parts, which you can use in your product design. For this tutorial, we have used bearings from some websites. The links to the websites are provided in the description, but we have already downloaded the parts for you. You can find them in the tutorial folder. Firstly, import the cat product file from the bearing one folder into the product. We need to constrain it to the large hole in the bearing housing. To do this, we will use two contact constraints. The first one will be applied between the protruding lip on the uppermost part of the hole and the front of the bearing, like so. The second is applied between the inner wall of the hole and the outer face of the bearing. Now click the update tool. Next, import the bearing spacer part. Using the same set of constraints, position it behind the first bearing inside the hole. Now it is time to import the third part. Import the cat product file from the bearing 2 folder. Again, we will use two contact constraints as shown in order to correctly position the bearing inside the housing. You should be able to see this product taking shape finally. Now we need to use the catalogue again. This time however, we will go to the US standards drop down menu, like so. We want to import a circlip into our product, specifically a B27.M steel internal retaining ring. Look on screen for its location. To constrain this part, first apply a contact between the face of the circlip and the second bearing as shown. Now apply a contact between the purpose made groove and the outer face of the circlip. The penultimate part is the shaft. This will slot through the bearing holes with the head sitting against bearing 1. Begin by using a coincidence constraint between the centre lines of the shaft and the bearing housing's hole. Following on from this, use a contact constraint between bearing 1 and the shaft's head as shown. Remember that we can use the quick constraint tool to speed things up. Finally, import the rotary seal into the product. Using the x-axis line, apply a coincidence to the seal and the centre line of the shaft. Then apply a contact constraint between the inside face of the rotary seal and the circlip. Click update. That's it for this product. We hope that you found it helpful. You may have realised that simple products do not require many different types of constraints. If you wish to learn more about the constraints on offer, check out our website.